so hello and welcome to today's lesson in our study of complex analysis i'm guido can randolph a final year student of mathematics knust and i'll be taking you through today's lesson so in today's lesson we'll be talking about estimation of the absolute value of a complex integral okay which is known somehow by the ml estimate so the ml estimate so this is what we are going to talk about today so let's take some readings so the upper bound for the absolute value of a complex integral can be related to the length of the contour c and the absolute value of f of z along the contour c so in fact we have this equation right so when you have a complex valued function f of c and you are finding the integral along a contour c then the absolute value of that complex integral is less than or equal to ml where m here is the upper bound of the absolute value of the function f of z along the contour c and l is the length of the contour c so this is for this m and this is this L okay so you can just look at the definition right it's very simple so the upper bound for the absolute value of a complex integral can be related to the length of the contour C and the absolute value of F of C along C and in fact it's been given by this equation here so actually this equation has a lot of importance and you be coming back to it as we move along so the m here is the upper bound of the absolute value of f of z along c and l is the length of the contour c so this here we've named it equation a so now the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to learn how to derive a how did a come about okay all right so right we consider this first equation here right so we consider this integral okay so you know we have the integral of a function f of z along a contour c so when we find the absolute value of this particular let me change my marker my ink sorry so when you find the integral of this particular sorry the absolute value of what we have here you could see that we can break this down okay so when we parameterize it let's see so we can parameterize this okay so from what we did do you remember the contour integrals when you're talking about the parameterization okay so when you parameterize what we have here what is inside here you are going to have whatever we have here so this is just from the contour integral that we did in our previous videos okay and the complex integration right so now when we have this so this well i said this is from what we did from the contour integral okay so if you don't understand how this was derived you can watch the previous video on complex integration and you get it so now that we have this then now we can use the triangle law of inequality okay we say that when you have the absolute value of a plus b it is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b all right so that means this here is less than or equal to what we have here so you can see we just use the triangle law of inequality all right so now after having this then remember we said our m our m is the upper bound of the absolute value of f of z so that means that whatever we have here is our m so that's why we write the m here and this here is the absolute value of dz dt then all time dt okay so right now we can bring this our m out here so when you bring this our m out here we are going to have this remaining this integral remaining okay but you know when you talk about integration integration you're talking about like the region the region the area right so 
this here is the integral so um you know this year this year is the same as what we have here all right this year is the same as what we have here then when we decide to bring in the integral sign you replace this by this because you are saying this is the same as this then this becomes sorry this becomes our l the length of the contour c so that means that we can replace the whole of this here by l so hence now we have what we can see here so I mean you've been able to prove equation a okay so don't worry you can go through the proof you realize that it is very very simple okay it is very very simple so to run over so here we use the definition from the contour integrals to know that this is the same as this then here we use the triangular law of inequality to you know get what we have here then from the definition we know that this is m so we made this replacement then this here we had it that then we can bring our m out then we have this and after having this we know the whole of this is l okay so the explanation is what has been given here then making the substitution then we have this and this is the same as equation a so hence we've been able to show that okay all right so now let's use this to solve one one example i think one example would be cool so example it says find an upper bound for what we have here where c is the circle with um radius two transverse ones in the counterclockwise direction so we are supposed to solve this particular question and we are going to use the concepts that we've discussed so far and you realize that it's not that difficult you just have to go over and you realize that everything will be fine okay all right so you realize that we have a circle here right and so this c here is no more a contour but it's a circle so from the equation it was the integral of f of c dz the absolute value of it is less than or equal to ml where m is equal to the absolute value of our f of z the function then l is the length of our contour c so here you could see that we have a circle right so that means that the l here is the length of our circle c and if you could remember from your geometry the length of a circle is the same as the circumference of the circle so that means that the length of the circle here will be given by 2 pi r right because of the circumference so the path of integration has length 2 pi r so this is the explanation to that so where our r is the modulus of z which is 2 so that when you make that substitution we are going to get our l to be equal to 4 pi so i hope you understand so finding for our l wasn't difficult at all so it's very easy then now we come to finding for our m so our m is the absolute value of our function f of c so here this happens to be our function f of c right so to find the upper bound of it so i was like recall that we have this which you all know and m happens to be the upper bound right so now we seek an upper bound m for the function so we recall that this was the function f of z where we have the absolute value of z to be equal to 2 okay so you know when you find the absolute value of our function f of z this is what we get okay but we are saying this is less than or equal to the absolute value of this all over this because you could see that here we had the absolute value of z squared plus one but sorry but from the same triangular law of inequality 
when you have let's say something like this right this will be the same as less than or equal to this plus that so because of this that we these changes that we made to the denominator that's the reason you have less than or equal to here so i've given a definition to that so this is because so as i wrote here that's from a triangle of or triangle of inequality okay so now we have to find this numerator we have to find this denominator values for them so this that we have here is the same as this but from the question we know the absolute value of z is 2 so making a substitution then we have what we have here then when it comes to this we know this is less than or equal to this so you've talked about it from the triangle law of inequality so we know that the whole of this is 2 so this will give us 2 squared as you have here then the absolute value of 1 is 1 so 2 squared is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 so for the modulus of z equals 2 so that means that um, we will have the absolute value of e z over z squared plus 1 will be less than or equal to e raised to the power 2 or all over 5 so it's just from this place so now the whole of this give us e2 and this give us 5 so that's what we have here and so to find the upper bound of the absolute value of the integral is going to be the what we have here is going to be less than or equal to m times l but in this case this happens to be our M and this happens to be our L right so we just put them together so putting them together is going to give us 4 pi e squared then all over 5 so this here happens to be the upper bound of the absolute value of that integral so this solves our question right so it solves this question so you can go to the internet or find textbooks and look for some examples in and try your hands on them they are not that difficult if you pay attention and if you solve more questions so if you didn't get anything you can always rewatch the video to get one or two important concepts so thank you very much it has been a joy coming away with yet another lesson have a nice day bye